this guy. This guy, Steve Copeland. Steve's a nice enough guy. I tell you what, you know, you don't get along with Steve. It's probably your fault. You know, he's one of those kind of guys. He's a country Democrat from Okima. Fact is, uh, a few years ago when Scott Inman uh, unceremoniously left the House, the Democrat caucus in the House put Steve in charge. And Steve helped steer the Democrat caucus through some very tough times, uh, a couple of um, special sessions. And then, of course, um, the 2018 spring regular session. And then he sat there on the um, bicameral uh, interim study, what we call the joint study on medical marijuana, instead of being back there in his district campaigning. Well, Steve lost that race, maybe because he was busy serving in Oklahoma trying to make sense of a amateur written medical marijuana law that the people passed overwhelmingly. Well, Steve left. Steve now is coming back. What makes this interesting is when he was at that medical marijuana interim study, the first day of the study, I came early and I went up to his office there was nobody else on, I don't think anybody else on the whole floor, at least certainly not his wing uh, on the north side of the house. I went in, there was his secretary there, excuse me, LA, and uh, sat down with Steve, nice enough guy, and I introduced myself. I said, you know, I'm probably not as well known amongst the Democrats, but uh, you might call me a Tea Party Republican. You know what Steve said to me? He says, you know, Dave, he says, when the Tea Party first started, it was just as much Democrat as it was Republican. And I kind of surprised as well. Tell me more. And Steve said, you know, <clears throat> the reason the Democrats were just as much against uh, or just as much identifying with Tea Party is because it was the, the bailouts, the TARP, the, the stimulus. It was bailing out the big boys, or the too big to fail. But the mom and pop's businesses got nothing. The working family's got nothing. And I looked at him, I said, Steve, you're the first person I've talked to in this building who gets it. So yeah, Steve's a Democrat, okay? He's gonna vote Democrat on things and he's gonna vote for things that I wouldn't vote for, I wouldn't support. But the interesting thing here is he's somewhat in no man's land because there's just less than a handful of rural Democrats left in our state house. You've got Meredith up there in uh, Tahlequah and he's doing his best. He's gonna vote for every gun rights thing, okay, two way, all of it, because he doesn't, <laughs> you know, Don Spencer and the gun rights people breathing down his back. Plus his constituents are all hunters, outdoorsmen, sportsmen. They enjoy shooting sports and they enjoy taking responsibility for their own self-defense. You got uh, Ben Loring up there in Miami. He's barely, barely squeaked back into office. And Miami's always been a pretty strong Democrat area. Uh, out there in Chickasha, you got David Perryman. He's not even running again. And then you go down there to Little Dixie and uh, Johnny Tadlock left the Democrat party and joined the Republicans. You know what? He's more conservative than probably most of the Republicans. The Democrats, the rural Democrats in Oklahoma are fairly conservative. But the party has been taken over by the radical socialists and even the communists. Uh, it's largely an Oklahoma City party and somewhat lesser degree Tulsa metro area Democrats. And fact is, Democrats are somewhat getting ready to take over the whole Oklahoma City metro area. Uh, they're running a very strong candidate against Brian uh, Mon for the uh, county commission there. And in fact, uh, you know, it's just, there's three seats on there. There's a Democrat seat and a Republican seat, Kevin Calvey has, and then Brian Mon, uh, if they lose that one, the Democrats take over control. And it'll deeply affect things like, um, are they gonna be a sanctuary county? Uh, you know, a number of the uh, things. Now, there's some things I'll support the Democrats. I'll side with the Democrats with on some things. Uh, they are advocating for 
better care in our public mental health, uh, criminal justice reform. I don't believe we are the most evil state in society, and yet our prisons seem to indicate otherwise. So we are working on that. Let's get back to talking to Steve, about Steve. Steve um, is going to have to, now keep in mind, his son, Sean Copeland, is uh, Governor Stitt's uh, Commerce Secretary. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And so uh, where's that? Where's Sean going to come down in this? Is Sean going to help campaign for dad like most families expect the kids to help dad get uh, win his race? Or is Sean going to declare himself neutral? Or is he going to say, no, nah, I'm a Republican. I'm part of a Republican governor's cabinet. I'm going to support the Republican. Well, the Republican in this one is Logan Phillips. Interesting guy. Logan pretty much destroyed the notion that you got to have lots of money to win in a uh, state house race. Logan didn't raise a dime. Logan faced primary opponents, then a runoff opponent, a very well managed runoff opponent, and still beat him, and then took on Steve, the Democrat caucus leader in the House and beat him. And Logan Phillips didn't raise any money, didn't spend any other than his own money. Now, Logan was a popular educator from Okima. Now he's got to seek re-election, Logan Phillips says, on his voting record as a lawmaker. That will be interesting. So watch that race. That's going to be one to watch. You're going to want to watch the, the Mike Christian trying to get back into the house in a rather Democrat area of Oklahoma City. George Fott's going to try to take on Sneed and get his old seat back. Uh, Rick West, you know, he stepped out, didn't get defeated. Now he wants back in. Lundy Kiger's the incumbent. We'll have to see what goes on there. And then, you know, Sheila Dills and the machine, the chamber and education machine, going to prevail against uh, Angela Strong. So those are just a few of the races, and there's plenty more. We'll be talking about some of them. But anyway, the, the truth is, I think it's 43 people, 43 Republicans, I think it is, got reelected this week just because nobody ran against them.